So one of the tools that we have available to us is the profiler inside of Chrome. So as we've been working on this last project, I wanted to um, kind of figure out where some of the bottlenecks were because we spent a lot of time working at the API layer to add caching. And even with the caching, there was still, there's still a little bit of lag. So I went into Chrome and just switched back and forth between two screens. Um, and when I did that, I captured this profile. So this tells me exactly what's going on uh, during the five or so seconds, five and a half-ish that it takes uh, to re-render the page. So you can see uh, this tells us a number of things, one of which is it's actually idle for a good portion of it, um, which we'll need to investigate. But aside from the pieces where it's idle, all of these windows right here, all of these sections where you see the spike are where uh, the CPU is being used to call different methods. So this allows us to go in and figure out which of the methods in our application are taking the most time. So the first one that I can see right here, this big one right here that takes oh about, well, it tells me, if I hover over it down there towards the bottom, 710 milliseconds. So that's a fairly big portion of the rendering of the page. Uh, so now I know that that method uh, is expensive. And then we can go in and take a look at what's going on inside of handle text selection. What do we need to do to optimize that? And maybe can we get away without calling it all the time? So that's one of the things that the profiler allows us to do. All right, so then the next thing that we can do, um, so right there, that's a big optimization. You can see that it's triggering a whole bunch of other stuff going on. The stuff down inside of React, we're not going to be able to optimize, of course. I mean, these are all React calls, and you can see those. But at the very least, you can see what's going on. Um, now, the other thing you can do is kind of scan down here. A lot of times when you see this anonymous, that's going to be a place where you want to look. Uh, so right there, here's this anonymous. And you can see down there at the bottom, uh, the API JS file line 196. So that's taking about 400 milliseconds. Maybe that's something we need to go look at as well. Um, and then if we can optimize, and there's another API call. Uh, if we can optimize those or find a way to not call them at all, then we can improve the performance of the application so that it's more responsive to a user. Uh, Client-side applications really should feel as close to desktop applications as possible. All right, so Justin, yes. can you explain to me what I'm seeing here because I'm seeing a left to right and then a lot of rows and are all those rows all the times you swap back and forth so left to right is here's the beginning of when I be when I started to capture the profile that's zero and the right side is when I stopped capturing the profile so then it captures the CPU profile and then from top to bottom those are the methods that are being called all the way through the entire stack so you can review the stack that was being executed at that moment in time, and then the width of it shows you how much time it took. Now I can scale this, so if I, if I use my mouse here, you can see the, the two bars up here at the top, right here and right here. That's showing me the window, and I can move it back and forth here. So if I want to continue to zoom in, I can do that, and then I can look at specific moments in time. So here's where the CPU is really starting to be used. Um, and now I can look through all of the methods in that stack and figure out who's calling what. Does that make sense? So like, here's that handle text selection. I've blown it up and you can see how wide it is. So for this about one second, a little less than a second, that's what's um, consuming the CPU. So looking at your handle text selection, then has a call to finish selection and close modals and show interaction modal, and those in turn call everything beneath them. Yeah, and uh, you can see, one one. like those guys um, did something to cause the dispatcher to dispatch mm -hmm. uh, a constant, to hit the stores. You know. uh, <clears throat> and then you, you can see right here, there was the there's the actual dispatcher. So emit change, these right here, that happens inside of the stores, which then it's going to tell that 
the uh, views, well, the store change is going to fire, and then that's going to tell the views, hey, you need to go get new state from the stores. Um, and so that's kind of what's happening right here. If you want to just, if you look at the, the call stack, you can kind of see what, what's going on across the board. Once you hit this stuff down here, um, this is more likely to be in the React code. Now, there is an exception to that, and I was looking at this um, just a minute ago. Over here, uh, I think towards the end, there is a call to API.js. You just can't see it. It's down below, and I can't figure out how to scroll, how to scroll uh, vertically. If I put it on my other monitor, it's big enough. I can see the entire thing, but for some reason, there's no scroll bar over here, so you can see there's probably some trick that I just don't know. Um, but Maybe uh save it and pull it up in a spreadsheet or something. Yeah, you could probably do that. Um, you know, for me, I just put it on my bigger monitor. And if you're in the office, we have the giant TVs, so you can just throw it up on the TV and it'd be pretty easy to see. Or you can do this. This is the chart so that we get things over time. We can also do uh, heavy bottom up and we can go in and say, holy cow, why is this thing idle for so long? So that's something we need to investigate. Um, and you can say, what are the really fast things? Well, these are 1.2 milliseconds. Probably ignore those. Uh, this is the stuff that's taking the most time. And then you just walk through this and say, okay, this isn't our code. This isn't our code. Where where does our code begin to show up? Like here's store changed. So that's in our code. There's this type check, which for some reason is taking 1.2 seconds. So maybe that's something we need to go in and take a look at and see why the prop types are causing issues. If you notice there's this little bang on there, um, I think that that's, let's see, well. Hey, Jeff, if, you, if you hold shift, you can scroll. Oh, awesome, thanks. Let's try that. So if I go back to the chart, I hold down shift. There we go, nice. Guess I should have spent more time messing around with this. But um, yeah, so you can see the whole thing. Scroll up and down there. Okay, so we've got these we need to look at. I did notice that in the type checking, uh, there are some warnings that are showing up in the console. And I'm guessing if we dealt with those warnings, um, I think it's because of some old code that just got left. So the types are wrong, or it's saying this value is required when it's no longer actually required and it's not being passed into a child component from a parent component. Um, if we clean those up, then we might actually be able to reduce this, right? Like we could maybe get a full second increase in performance, which would be really nice. I was under the impression that uh, type checking was for development only, that when you go to production, the React is supposed to drop that out. Okay, maybe. I We should try, well, we should check staging and see if it's dropped all that out. Um, and to make sure that we are doing different builds, because I'm not entirely sure that we are. All right, so here's this render method down here. It's taking 474 milliseconds. Then you can go in and explore that. Uh, there's also this tree view. So we can basically explore the application, at least for that segment of usage, and figure out how to optimize it. So, uh, I think there's plenty that we can do. Uh, it's just this tool helps us out. So any questions mainly about the tool, uh, we'll deal with the actual optimizations of the app later. Um, today sometime, but if you're interested, we can pair and work on that. Okay, no questions? All right, thanks, you guys. I actually do have a question. I was oh. to oh, okay. uh, can you filter it very easily? Like, say, hey, I only want to see things that took over 400 milliseconds. Um, that's a good question. I'm not sure. If you just sort them by time taken, you could say, okay. here's everything. everything. Yeah, this is, that's how I would do it. I don't know yeah. that there's a way to filter it and drop the things that are down below here, but um, yeah. Okay, thank you. Sure. You want to explain uh, the difference between self and total time? <laughs> I have no idea. Um, it's probably... I'm guessing here, but if I had to guess, it, it has to do with the amount of time this method actually took versus the amount of time that it took to call through the entire chain, through the whole call stack, right? So 
mixin.perform itself may have only taken 1.2 seconds, but all of the things that it called and the things that those things called took 1.6 milliseconds. That's my guess. I don't know. Somebody wants to research that. Other question. Uh, is there any way to show network activity on that timeline? That's um, what brings to mind first when you're like, oh, everything's blank here. I'm like, well, this just shows CPU, and you have CPU right. and network and then user input. And I don't know if you can get the network to show up here. Um, it's actually a really good question. Like, how do we investigate what is going on in this idle time back here, right? Like, what's happening right here? You do have the timeline so that you could see uh, what what network calls are being made. And of course the timeline here, well, mine's not running, but we could capture that and then um, maybe do all this stuff at the same time. So let's try that really quickly. Uh, where's the app? So let's go ahead and maybe not worry about memory or painting and start recording and then we'll just refresh the page over here okay now it's done loading so if i hit stop recording then i think that will give you the full Let's see, like, here's a breakdown. This is kind of nice. Uh, there was 43, well, it took 19 seconds total, so there must be something. Yeah, it's sitting idle for 16 seconds, um, which might be the network request. But you can see we've got 43 milliseconds loading, about two and a half seconds for scripting, and then the rendering and the painting are super fast. So now if we investigate this, we can probably zoom in here. Let's see what we've got. Sorry, I'm zooming way, way in so we can figure out what these guys are doing. See the dispatch happening here. We've got the anonymous function called here. I was hoping it might give me some more information about what's actually happening right there. But it is not. Um, I can see the, the dispatch and the get state. You know, here's store changed, here's the get state, so. I'm not seeing that in, I'm not seeing the network requests alongside this. Maybe that's up here. I don't know. Um, I probably need to play around with this some more and get better at it. Does the network tab show you anything? Oh uh, yeah, this will give you all kinds of information about where the requests are being made and how long they're taking. So, you can just come here and see, oh, we've got these network requests like just loading this one PNG is actually one of our more expensive things, so maybe we should optimize that PNG. Uh, here's a request to the API that's taking one and a half seconds. The CSS is actually taking two seconds to load, um, which is potentially problematic, I guess. Um, and then, of course, here's the actual loading of the JavaScript. So the loading of the JavaScript takes looks like about seven seconds. And this is in development mode, so none of this has been minified or anything. Um, I suspect it also could be uh, slow because we're sending down the source map so that we can handle the debugging, um, which is what makes it nice to, to debug inside of here. 
So yeah, we'll probably want to test the same, do the same thing once we go to production, and it might uh, improve significantly simply because we're not downloading so much development JavaScript. Uh, but maybe we can figure out how to gzip and shrink up the CSS as well. All right. Um, I guess maybe I would just say go play with it. There's a whole bunch of stuff in here. I just started playing with it, and uh, it's been helpful to at least identify a couple areas where we can improve performance. So, more questions or? We good. All right.